Hello, it's Dr. Macho for Heart and Lungs Focused Ultrasound. In the following part of the lecture on diastolic dysfunction, we will take a closer look on left ventricular filling and what is important to understand and to know. Let's review. Diastole is the time from aortic valve closure until mitral valve closure. So we are talking about this specific time interval, which is called diastole, so the filling of the heart. And the filling of the left ventricle is dependent on several factors. One of the factors is left atrial volume. On the right hand side, you can see a loop where you see that left atrial volume is increased. It's 95 milliliters. You have two possibilities to measure it. You can measure it as in this case without indexing on the body surface area. Overall, you should index it. Then you will also calculate an increased volume. So left atrial volume in diastolic dysfunction and left ventricular filling is an important factor. The second factor which is important is left ventricular suction. As discussed in the previous lecture, the expanding of the left ventricle, so the suction, is an active movement of the left ventricle and it contributes to a very large portion of left ventricular filling. Another very important factor of LV filling is the pressures in the left atrium or elevation in the pressures in the left atrium and the pressures of the left ventricle. And last but not least, another very important factor you can See on the right hand side the strain image of a hypertrophied heart or a thickened myocardium is the stiffness of the left ventricle. The stiffer the left ventricle becomes, the more increased are the filling pressures. And one more thing not to forget is the contractile function of the left atrium. The left atrium has several functions. You can see it in the graphic on the right side. There's a reservoir function, a conduit function, and the pump function. And the pump function is the A wave we discussed previously, which resembles the contractile function of the left atrium. Keep in mind that left atrial strain will be very important in the next lectures. And try to remember already the normal values for the two measurements we have in left atrial strain, the pulse, the peak atrial longitudinal strain, and the PAX, the peak atrial contraction strain, seen below the graphic. To see a normal example, we can visualize it in this image or in this loop. You see the left ventricle is normal in size, has a normal ejection fraction. The left atrium is also normal in size. We see that the overall volume is 35 milliliters. So with a body surface area of 1.7, 1.8, this of course is a normal value. And on the right hand side, we see the left atrial strain. We see the contraction strain or the contraction phase at the end where we have the so-called PAX we could measure here, which has a normal value of approximately 17. This concludes the important parts of left ventricular filling. Let's move on to a brief summary about all the measurements we can have in diastolic dysfunction.